there, we are Mike and Brenda Baker, and today we are gonna talk about something that we were asked by one of our followers to talk about, and that is the do's and don'ts of blended family life. All right, so you spoke and we listened, the do's and don'ts of blended family life. So <clears throat> the do's and don'ts we're gonna give you may or may not be the do's or don'ts you're looking for because a lot of people want a play by play kind of do and don't, you know, do fix this dinner, don't fix that dinner, you know, do fold clothes this way, don't fold clothes that way. And that is not, that is not the case in blended family life as, as I'm sure you're aware. <clears throat> it would be wonderful if there was a play by play, do, don't, do this, don't do that, do this, you know, put your lipstick on this way, don't put it on that way. But it, there isn't. So we're gonna cover what we feel are the three biggest do's and the three biggest don'ts in blended family life. And you know, of course, you guys are starting to ask questions uh, in the in the comments and that's awesome. Continue to ask those questions. We'll continue to fine tune these, these videos to accommodate what it is you're struggling with and what it is you need. Really, blended family life is, as you are already finding out, very, very messy. There is no set rules. A lot of variables can come in. So just understand that what we're trying to do here by even having this this channel is to encourage and support you in what you're going through and try to give tips on how could how th like things that could make that easier better uh not be so hard whatever um we're experts as far as our family goes and we have mentored and helped and coached a lot of people however there's always going to be something that maybe we haven't seen before um, and really the biggest thing that we have found that is such an issue these days is narcissism. When you have an ex or maybe it's the step parent that is a narcissist. All right. Um, one of our followers, uh, talked about how, you know, there's a lot of hate for step moms or for bio moms, but in my life, the step mom is a beast. Okay. I get it. I understand that, you know, whatever. So when we're talking to step parents, and that sort of thing. Just understand, if that isn't your situation, listen for what, what tips could work in your family with opposite you know, titles, basically. Um, but our main de demographic is stepmoms with the bio, married to the bio parent. That's mainly what we are working to help because we had such a difficult time we didn't know what we were doing. We had nobody to talk to. All of our friends and family members were ha on their first marriage. They didn't have the step parent or the step parent situation. They didn't have the narcissistic bio mom. We had no support, but yet people wanted to point the finger at us about different things that we did wrong. And it was like, uh, excuse me, this is a little bit more difficult than you seem to think. I used to have a friend that she thought that she knew every single thing about step parenting from watching us. Um, sorry, but you, you know, those of you that have people in your group that have never been divorced, they don't know. So no matter what they say, they do not have good advice for you. So please understand, we're trying to bring good advice, uh, advice from things that we've done really right and things we've done really not right, okay? Uh, we've made mistakes and in our next video, we're going to talk about some of those things. But now we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts that we see are the most important. And we hope that this helps you in the way that we're, you know, we're trying to. So, yeah. So just keep in mind that when you're taking advice, you know, it's always good to take advice from people that have been there. Now we've been there. Yeah. Uh, you can't, you know, a lot of your friends are going to think they have great advice for you because, you know, because because when you watch college football, obviously you can coach a college football team, right? No, <laughs> no, you can't. All right. Don't even try. So the whole point of the matter is, is they're well-intentioned and they don't mean to hurt you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of your friends are going to have a lot of opinions because what they see, they don't see mixed family. They just see family because that's probably what they have. They're not not divorced. They're, they have all their kids in the house. They don't have any of this excess stuff to deal with. And so they see marriage and family as just one general set of rules. When in truth, with a mixed family, not only do those general set of rules apply, but then there's the mixed family rules that apply on top of those and everything is, and you guys end up sandwiched in between. 
So with that, let's get into the first do and don't. So number one, do run your house your way. Right. Now this is, we, when we sat down to try to think about all the different things that we could say in this video, mm -hmm. this is the most important mm -hmm. one. We cannot stress it enough. It doesn't matter what other people think. We really kind of led into this point but people around you think they know what they don't know. You know, you know what you need to do. Um, trust your gut and trust your parenting. Uh, and generally speaking, if your marriage is solid, nothing else matters. Yeah. So just keep in mind, look, I mean, you've got to quit comparing yourself. I mean, a lot of you are churchgoers, let's be honest. Yeah. Quit comparing yourself to the family down in the front row that, that has all that appears appears to have all their crap together because I guarantee you they don't. Good. They could be that family that they're screaming at their children until they get into the parking lot and then they say, "Okay, everyone, put a smile on your face." I cannot tell you how many times we have heard this from church kids or people that grew up in a in a religious family, uh, even some preachers' kids that yeah. their parents would scream at them. Everything was a crazy mess at home, but when they were in the public eye, they were a different people. And so stay away from that because you really, what you're trying to do with your, with your, your family is you're trying to raise them up as a collective group. Yeah. You're trying to make sure that the bonds are, are set. <clears throat> you're doing everything you can to set the kids and stepkids up for success. Um, you want to love them. You want to be together forever, but sometimes that doesn't happen. So all you can do is what you can do. If you make mistakes, as we've said in many other videos, apologize and move forward yeah. with changed behavior. So, so really when we say run your house your way, we mean exactly that. Run your house your way. You and your spouse want to run your house a certain way. Yeah. See, the big thing here is that there's too much noise from the other household. Yeah. And so we let that influence us. And we think that, well, because this happened over there, I've got to do this over here. Baloney. You don't. Just because this happened over here does not mean that you have to accommodate for it here. Run your house your way. Have your own rules. Set your own boundaries. And when they're there, they will learn. It's okay for them to have those things. Right. And another thing, too, and this is, this is something that I feel I did really poorly in some ways. Okay, so I heard about what the other household was doing. And so I wanted to do exactly the opposite in every single way because I didn't want the kids to think X, Y, or Z about us. The problem that you don't think about when you're in the parenting uh, blended family struggle, if, if you want to say it that way, is the damage that comes from the negative household that's trying to belittle you, put you down in front of the kids, tell the kids all the things that you do wrong, that has an impact mm -hmm. and long lasting impact with a lot of kids. So you can't, there's nothing you can do about those, those variables. So please, for the love of God, care about your own business and not the other family. Don't let the kids talk about it. If there's abuse, take care of abuse. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. If there's drugs, sometimes the courts will help you. Usually they won't though. You, there's only so much you can do. And you don't have to beat yourself up about the things that you've done wrong and, and feel bad because in the end, you're, try, you're trying to change what the choice that you made, right? You have good intentions. You want to do right by your kids. That's all that matters. The, the only thing that you can do is just trust your gut and trust your judgment and do your very best. But you're gonna make mistakes. That's all, like, really? Yeah. So, really, she touched on the do not there in the fact that do not involve, oh. the do not <laughs> is do not involve yourself in the time or energy of the other household. If they're breaking the law, that's one thing. If it's simply a moral dilemma, get over it. Yeah. You can't do anything about it. And the more you push, the more you push to try and do something about it, the uglier things get in your own house. So, number one, do run your house your way. Number one, do not, don't involve yourself in what the other household is doing. 
ignore it as much as is humanly possible so that you can continue to run your house your way and not be influenced by what other people are doing. Mm, yep. So that brings us to number two, and this is huge. Yeah. Okay. Number two, do treat all kids equally. All kids. All kids. Do you need to write it down? <laughs> all kids. Yeah. All right. They are all your children. Now, yeah, there are times when the bios, or, or even the steps for that matter, if you're the bio and they're the step, I mean, this goes either way, yeah. where they get bent because you start treating the kids like they're your own. That's what families do. In all reality, the kids should be treated as whole 100% members of the household, of both members in both households. Yes. Now, does it happen that way? Rarely. Okay, rarely it happens that way, but it doesn't change the fact that that's how it should be happening. Family is family. Mom is mom, dad is dad, doesn't matter if they're bio or step. Kids are kids, doesn't matter. So, we have some unruly <laughs> dogs. So, the whole point is, is do treat all kids equally. You cannot favor your own children. That will destroy the relationship with with all children, including the relationship with your spouse. Right. Okay. Too many times when we are coaching and working with people, we have people that are like, oh, that's their problem. I don't feel that I should have to X, Y, or Z. Then they wonder why they're getting divorced again. That is why. Yeah. If you don't take on your stepkids, it's not going to work. And we can show you the numbers if you're really that interested of people that we've worked with that have taken on 100% the kids and people who haven't. And let me tell you, probably I would say it's about 80% of people that re-divorced. If you want a divorce, do it your way. If you want to stay together, we're going on 26 years. We know what we're talking about and we've helped a lot of people get to those same places, so. Yeah, so the whole point here, that brings us to the do not in this one. Do not play the your kids, my kids game. Yeah. So these are two, these are intertwined, okay? Do treat all kids we equally and do not play the your kids, my kids game. If you expect your husband or wife to just pay for their kids and you'll pay for your kids, or they're not my kids, so I'm not gonna pay for that, your marriage is over already, Yep. okay? It's just a matter of time. If you wanna do that well, that's not my issue, I let them do all that disciplining, then your marriage is on the road to being done. Okay. Yeah. And I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback there and I've already got people going, no, no, those are, those are their kids and they need to take care of bull crap. I'm calling bull crap. They are your kids, meaning both. If you are unwilling to let your spouse discipline your kids or take care of your kids or do anything for your kids, then you did not come into this marriage with a full heart. You did not commit 100%. You came in out of convenience and you will leave very inconveniently. Yeah. Well, and and, and honestly, people, we just want what's best for you. Get over yourself. We, we want you to get <laughs> to that point where you're, you're realizing the things that you're doing wrong in your, in your marriage. Because let's be honest, Mike and I have had some serious problems. Like we never left each other, whatever. Yeah. But we've had some times where we had to deal with each other. And that's about as good as we did. Yeah. Uh, we've had some big troubles and... When we would step back and take the emotion out of it, uh, mostly me, I'm the issue with that, um, we realized that we, each of us, had our own set of responsibility that we were trying to not, well, how would you say that? I'm not sure. Like, there, were, there was responsibility on both parts that was causing the issue to keep building pressure, if you will. Mm -hmm. Is that... Yeah. Would you say I'm yeah. explaining that right? It's it's really important. And we really want to see you successful with happy kids. Uh, whether they're happy when they're adults is up to them. If you did all you can do, that's all you can do. Right? Yeah. That's, that's it. So that brings us to number three. Okay. Number three, the, the do is treat your marriage and your spouse as your number one priority. We also get pushback on this. Yeah. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and do the do not in this one too. So do treat your spouse and your and your relationship, or your marriage as your number one priority. Do not allow the thoughts of others to influence you in this. Sounds kind of like number one, doesn't it? Quit letting others dictate what your marriage should look like. 
I mean, this reality TV stuff is, it just kills me. They're like, well, you know, such and such, they're on TV, all right? You're not getting reality. And then I got some bad news for you. When you're sitting in church, those couples that you think are perfect, tell you what, you get some gumption up and you go ask them how their marriage is. Do you guys ever have problems? Because you seem to get along and they're going to laugh at you. Not because not because you're ridiculous, but because the question is hilarious because they're going to tell you, no, we have huge problems. All right. People okay. literally have thought for years that Mike and I have the perfect marriage mm -hmm. and we're, we're this amazing power couple and we're like, whoa. Okay, yeah. let's talk about this for a moment. Not so much. Yes, we have a great relationship. Yeah. We've worked on it really hard because there's been some tough stuff. Um, and I wanted to say this in number two, we actually have a video about why you should let your spouse discipline your children. Mm -hmm. Please, please go back to that. It's only one or two, you know, you'll, one or two back, you'll see it. It's, it's a really important video. So you haven't watched that yet. Go ahead and do that. So, I mean, I don't think I can belabor the point enough. You have to treat your spouse as the number one priority, okay? And you have got to stop letting others dictate what happens in your relationship. Mm -hmm. You want to know who should dictate what happens in your relationship as far as others go? Your spouse. They should have a say in it. You should have a say as the other to them. And that is it. That is where it should stop. And if you're religious, scripture should have a huge chunk in there too. But as far as, well, you know, my mom said this and my, my mother-in-law said that and my dad said that and my father-in-law, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. You guys are ultimately the ones at the end of the day who have to dictate what happens. And you have to be okay with, with the results, okay? You're gonna have some struggles. You're gonna have some negative results because blended families with a narcissistic, narcissistic ex isn't gonna go so well. It just doesn't. We'd love to sugarcoat it and tell you, it's gonna be great and everybody's gonna be happy. And I honestly told myself that. I told myself, that our family would be fine once the kids were up older. And yeah, and you'll watch find the that, next video. You'll find that in the next video. So with that, we're gonna end this one here, okay? <laughs> so maybe not the do's and don'ts you were looking for, but the do's and don'ts you need, all right? We legitimately cannot sit here and give you a list of do's and don'ts because the do's and don'ts will look so different across mm -hmm. families. Situations will be different, court cases will be different, divorce decrees will be different. Really, these videos are here and go through all the videos. I, I understand not everybody has time to go through all the videos, but go through the videos that are pertinent to you and begin to build your own do's and don'ts. These are the three major do's and don'ts. One thing I do want to say is we're about to do a video on complete transparency in ours. Yeah. We realize we have a lot of videos out there now. We've actually gained a lot of followers and we want to make sure that you understand that we've had problems. And so we're gonna do a complete transparency on our mixed family so you can see what our results with adult kids are and our results with younger kids have been so that you not know what to expect, but know how to push through to continue to make your relationship work. And I'm gonna add one more do. Do use the parenting apps, one of them. Because in a lot of states, the what is put on there and the you know, what you and your ex-spouse talk about is permissible in, as evidence in court. Apps. Um, I, there, there are a bunch of different apps. They're for blended families. They're specifically designed to, when you've got it, especially a narcissist that you're dealing with, you only communicate through this app and all of the things are stored. Okay. Um, it's a really, really important because then it removes some of the back and forth he said she said and it's it just it can really help the situation to kind of diffuse it so please use those apps one of them all right so that's all we have for today please go ahead and if you have more questions um try to make them as specific as possible so that we can answer those questions and do our very best to help you in this situation that you're in um we so much thank you for coming and being with us today, for asking questions, making comments. It's super encouraging to us that some of our videos are really helping you guys. Uh, sure, we've gotten some haters, but we don't mind. They're just angry. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, if you need any help from us, go ahead and where would they email us, actually? Okay. Let, okay. Let's just say... Um, 
Brenda at momsmixfamilyblender.com. That's where you can get a hold of me. Uh, and if it's a question for Mike, just say Mike in the uh, the subject line and then I'll forward it right to him and he'll answer it. So with that, thank you very much for being here. We thank you for just really encouraging us with your comments and we hope to see you again soon. All right. Bye.